first story. OP beat the SHT out of his brother, after catching him saying his fiancée. After four years, OP's family wants him to forgive his brother and be a family again. But OP got him locked up for the rest of his life. I am 27 met my fiancée F25 almost seven years ago, when we were both studying at college. We met through mutual friends, and about a year later, we started dating. When she was introduced to my family, everyone was delighted with her, even my mother, who tends to be somewhat reserved with foreigners. Note. My mother and father are migrants, and since they arrived in the country where we live, they have always stayed close to the local community. So they are generally very reserved with anyone who is not from our community. This sounds racist, but it is not. At this point, I must mention my brother M29. Before the incident, he was my superhero. I always admired him because he was never intimidated by the local children, and because he was always very protective of me and our sister F22. He always reminded us that we should never look down just because someone tried to annoy us, and that we had as much right to live here as anyone. And when I introduced him to my girlfriend, they became good friends. Time passed, and my girlfriend was quite close to my family, especially my siblings. Given her closeness to my family, it was usual for her to hang out with other of my relatives. She would go shopping with my sister and mother, play billiards with me and my cousins, and be at every party my family organized. It was at one of these parties that me and my family ended up very drunk, to the point that I ended up sleeping on the floor of my parents' living room. When the party ended, my girlfriend was behaving very weird, and when I asked her what was going on, she told me, I think your brother tried to kiss me. The surprise that she gave me when hearing those words was so great that any effect of the alcohol disappeared and I asked her to tell me everything that had happened. She told me that several of the guests went to the roof to drink up there and feel the wind or something like that. Little by little, they all left until in the end, only she and my brother were left up there. They drank a while more, and while they were talking, she noticed that he was staring at her, and out of nowhere, he bent down, trying to kiss her, but she was faster and dodged it. The atmosphere became very uncomfortable after that, and she left there. When she finished telling me what happened, I took her to her house, and later I talked to my brother and asked him to clarify the whole story. He basically told me the same story, but from his point of view, he apologized and said that he was so drunk that he wasn't thinking, and that he apologized for doing that. Just remembering that conversation makes my blood boil, because, at that moment, I thought that it had only been a minor incident, something that could be solved with dialogue and establishing some limits. I could never think about what was going to happen next. After what happened at that party, the relationship between my brother and I was uncomfortable. We almost never spoke, and when we did, it was as polite as possible, almost as if we were strangers. The only person who knew what had happened, besides the three of us, was my younger sister. Because on one occasion, when she and my girlfriend were talking, she asked if she knew why my brother and I had become distant from what she told her the story. My girlfriend and I decided not to comment on the rest of my family because we didn't want the relationship to fracture further. After a few months, my family organized a party where they invited a lot of people, friends, family and people from our community. It was at that party that my girlfriend and my brother met again. At that point, I thought that enough time had passed since the kiss incident and that it could be the first step for things to return to normal. At some point during the party, I lost track of my girlfriend and I started looking for her. I looked for her for a while without seeing her, so I assumed that maybe she was with my sister. But something passed through my head, so I decided to look upstairs. While I was going up the stairs, I started to hear strange noises in one of the rooms, and when I opened the door, my brother was pushing my girlfriend against the bed, covering her mouth, and trying to put her hand under her dress while she was trying to fight back. I didn't think twice about, and as soon as I saw them, I pounced on my brother and started beating him. My girlfriend left the room as quickly as she could and went downstairs to ask for help. When my father and uncles came up I was still beating the SHT out of my brother. His face was full of blood, as was my knuckles. My father was the one who had to separate us. But I kept insulting him and hitting him. In the end he was able to separate us, and then he took me out of the room while my uncles checked how bad my brother was. Outside the room my father asked me what the hell had happened to make me act like that. It took me a while to be able to formulate words, but finally I told him that I had just seen that my brother had tried to abuse my girlfriend. My dad I know I was in shock for a while. He sat on the floor and put his hand on his forehead and was completely silent for about 10 minutes until my uncles called him because they were going to take my brother to the hospital. After they took my brother I went to look for my girlfriend and found her talking to my sister about what just had happened. I said goodbye to my sister and we left. All the way to our house she couldn't stop crying. She was confused 
angry and by the time we got home she kept crying until she fell asleep. And that was her routine for a couple of days until little by little she could talk again. In those days my family kept me informed of my conditioned brother. I had broken his nose and dislocated his jaw. My mother was the one in denial, incredulous that her son was capable of something like that. But I didn't think much about it because in the end each person reacts different. And also to a certain point, I understood why my mom was trying to explain my brother's actions. The last thing I heard from him was that after he left the hospital, everyone turned their backs on him for what he did. They fired him from his work and left town. The following weeks, I cut off almost any contact with the outside world and focused on helping my girlfriend. To say the least, she was handling the situation as best she could. She was still very scared about what had happened and had no energy at all. But after almost a month of being home, she had to go to work. But she returned after a few hours because she told me that she couldn't stop feeling threatened, that she was in danger, and that at any moment someone was going to try to do something bad to her. The OP couldn't post the entire story in this one post. So he continued it in a comment. When she calmed down, I suggested that the best thing to do would be to seek professional help. And although the idea did not seem the best to her at first, she ended up accepting it. And it really was the best for both of us. Right after the therapy began, she began to improve. And after almost two months in therapy, her therapist suggested that perhaps I should start taking some sessions too. Not only so that I could fully understand her therapist's situation and help her properly, but also because she told her therapist that since the incident I had almost no contact with anyone other than her, and that I had never really spoken about how I felt. At first, it sounded strange, but I was not going to question the recommendation of her therapist, even though she told me that. I was only going because I thought I would be able to let out the little things I had accumulated. I can remember that in the first session, I ended up in a mess. I felt so angry, not only with my brother, but also with myself. I was repressing what I felt because I didn't stop blaming myself for not having noticed my brother's behavior. And above all, I felt powerless because I couldn't protect her like I always said I would, and that he was afraid that something like that could happen to him again, and I couldn't help it. After several sessions, things finally started looking better. We both improved our mental states and even decided to take self-defense classes. A few weeks ago, I proposed to her. When I told my family, everyone congratulated me, but my mother remained a little quiet. And when no one was looking, she asked me if we could talk alone later. When we were alone, she told me that she was very happy for me and for her, but that she needed to tell me something. That's when she told me that she had been in contact with my brother since the pandemic began. She told me that my brother looked for her to find out if she and my father were okay, if he could help them in any way, and that he felt sorry for what he had done. My mother kept telling me things about him, until she told me something that almost made me yell at her. She told me, I think it's time for you to forgive your brother. Before she could continue talking, I left the room, took my keys, and went home. When I arrived, I told my fiancé what my mother told me, and she was as upset as I was by my mother's words, and I couldn't believe she said that. The following days, along with congratulations on my engagement, I also received questions about my brother, and that, if we had spoken again, if her already reconnect and things like that. I tried to ignore these situations as much as possible until four days ago my mother called me saying that she had told my brother about my engagement and that he was coming to town next week because he wanted to talk to me. I argued with my mom because she had no right to tell him something like that. I hung up on her and have had no contact with her since. After that some relatives have told me that maybe my mother is right and that I should give my brother a second chance. I reached my limit yesterday afternoon when my father called me to tell me that I had to be a good brother and at least try. Even when my father asks me to forgive my brother for what he did, suddenly everyone forgets what he did. Four years is enough to forget about what he did, and I honestly can't understand how they can think like that. I honestly don't know what to think about my family right now. I'm just upset with them, and I definitely don't want to see my brother again. I wrote here because I needed to vent and my therapist appointment was postponed. It's not the most professional choice, but I needed to get my feelings out somehow, and I appreciate whoever is reading this. PD. To all those who took the time to read this, I sincerely thank you. English is not my first language, so I apologize for any grammar mistakes, and if anything from my story is not clear, I will reply. A notable comment that sums this up. So your mother is protecting you and expecting you to forgive a racist or sexual predator. Maybe her, sounds racist, but is an attitude means she thinks less of your partner. What would her reaction be if someone attempted to saw your sister? I'm guessing she wouldn't be all, forgive and forget. Act accordingly. Your family is willing to sacrifice you, your partner, and your relationship just to have happy families with a rapist. And she's a woman. 
How dare she? Honestly, OP. You might as well go and see now. Because just the fact they've expressed this desire for reconciliation is in the happy family coffin. Her fiancé now knows they don't stand by her or you. And that what nearly happened under their own roof is now NBD. They are asking her to smile, come to BBQs, open Christmas gifts, laugh at a dinner table across from your brother, who saw her twice, and be totally cool with it. Let's face it, your mother hasn't believed your fiancé from the beginning. She believes, probably, that it's a misunderstanding, and being drunk, you probably thought you saw something different, that yes, they were in a room alone, and that was, wrong of him to do, but you overreacted because they were drinking and things got out of hand, or something else ridiculous. Your mother straight up disgusts me, as a fellow woman, as a fellow mom of boys, and as a fellow member of society. It's over with them. They chose. And it wasn't your side that they picked. Leave town and start over. If he comes back, she may never feel safe enough to even leave your front porch on a daily basis. Update. Hi everyone. Well, I really never expected to update, or at least not so soon. The moment I posted, I was doing it because I really needed to vent my feelings somewhere. But I never expected to be treated so kindly by all of you. Thank you. I especially want to thank everyone who sends their blessings and good wishes to my fiancé. Also, I want to give some answers to the general questions some of you had. I don't know if in my previous post, I let you understand that I was thinking of forgiving my brother, which I am never going to do, so for clarification, I no longer have a brother. That man died for me four years ago. Second of all, not every member of my family is thinking of forgiving my brother in any way possible. It is the minority in my family that thinks this. I could easily go and see with all of those except for my parents, and I am also clarifying that my sister is by my side. She is the best friend of my fiancé, and the only one besides me that knows how much she suffered the first month after the incident. Third, for some of you that asked for what I told my mom and dad, I generally told them that if I knew that my brother was in town, I would never speak to them again. What had been happening to my brother since last year's? Well, when my mom told me he contacted her at the beginning of the pandemic, he basically moved to the other side of our country, changed his name, and started taking therapy so one day he could reform. I didn't hear much more, and neither my sister nor my parents have asked about him, so that's all we know. Someone also DM'd about why my brother wasn't in jail, and while I responded to that person in private, I also want to tell everyone here. The main reason is because I beat up my brother to the point where he had to be taken to the hospital. When I consulted a lawyer friend of mine, she told me that if I pressed charges against my brother, he could also drag me with him, and I was going to be in jail for some time. She also told me that my then-girlfriend needed to testify, and she wasn't in the best mood for something like that. Also, my priority in that moment was her. I couldn't help her if I was in jail. The best we had at that time was a restriction order for her. Also, one of the reasons I hadn't posted and updated sooner was because we both got a restriction order for my brother. I hadn't told my parents about this, so if my brother showed up at any moment, they were going to take him to the local police station. Also, some of you mentioned that the attitude that my mom had in these situations was because, like I mentioned in my previous post, my girlfriend isn't from our community. But that is not the reason I can assure you. So now we are talking about what everyone expected. Why did I respond to my family? Well, I already had prepared something to say to all of them that were thinking of forgiving my brother, and for my parents to give them an ultimatum about picking between their son a man who tried to roost his brother's fiancé, or me, and their daughter. But I realized something else, while I was reading the comments of my previous post. To make my thoughts think about a horrible possibility that might happen. The comments were basically about how my brother was confident enough to try to saw my fiancé in a house full of people. And that, for the reaction of my parents these days, there was the possibility that my brother had done something like that before. And even worse, that my parents covered it. That question shook my world again. I never thought about that possibility. It was obvious that I was thinking too much about it when my fiancé asked me about what I was thinking. Note. A few hours after I posted, I told her and asked her if she wanted me to delete the post. But after reading the first comments, the rest of them told me that she understood why I did. And she really felt nice to all those people who sent nice messages and support for her. When I told her about the possibility of my brother trying or doing things like that to other people in the past, she also got a shiver down her spine. After that, we told my sister, and then began to ask other members of my family, the ones who support me, friends and members of my community, if they ever noticed something about my brother before the incident. So far, no one in my family remembers if my brother had that kind of attitude toward family members, but friends are a different story. Some of them remember that my brother was especially kind around friends or girlfriends of other members of my family. 
sometimes a little too touchy, but not anything that far as an attempt at robbing. It was until my sister reached out to the sister of an ex-girlfriend of my brother that she talked about how my brother was really strange around her family, and that since my brother was dating her sister, she noticed she was extremely quiet around him. And she also mentioned that my brother acted too flirty with her. We also contacted an ex-coworker of my brother, and she told us that one night after a company party, she remembered that my brother took another co-worker with him. But from what she can remember, she saw that her friend was really drunk at that time, and the morning after, she couldn't remember much of the last night. This whole situation made me realize that my brother was never the person I thought he was. After hearing more stories, I am now convinced that my brother is a menace to everyone around him. Since yesterday, everyone involved has had a reunion with all the possible evidence against my brother. And when we are ready, we are going to show everything to everyone in our community, on social media, and to anyone we can. I also have to say that I haven't talked to any of these parents. Tomorrow morning, I am going to drop the bomb along with an ultimatum. And I am also going to tell them that if we find any probe that shows that anyone knows about the things my brother has done, they are also going to pay the consequences. I am not going to be able to update for a while, or at least not any big update about these, until my brother is facing consequences. This is not how I imagined the weeks after my proposal, but this is something we can let slide. My fiancé has been there for me in every step, and I have done my best to be there for her in all of these. I can't imagine how she feels now, but I am so proud of her, and that she doesn't fear facing her trauma if that allows her to help others. Again, thanks to all of you who showed their support. OP made one mistake. In the line that says, a man who tried to steal his brother's fiancé or me and their daughter. He meant their daughter. He was referring to his sister, who is pregnant, and he corrected this mistake in a comment. Final post. Hi everyone again. I know it has been a while since I last updated, but I wanted to post a complete update once the problem was solved. One more time, I want to thank everyone who sent their good wishes to me and my fiancé, and to any other possible victim of my brother. Now to the main theme. What has happened? While the aftermath is still ongoing, I am happy to tell everyone here that my brother is facing justice for his actions. So back when I last updated, my fiancé, some friends, and I started to look through my brother's history. Searching to see if he ever abused or tried to abuse any other women. Once the evidence was ready, my brother faced consequences. At the end, we ended with the cases of eight different women, including my fiancé, that were somehow harassed by my brother, including ex-girlfriends, ex-co-workers, and two actual co-workers of his. I also mentioned that once we were ready, I was going to show my parents what kind of monster they were defining, and that we were going to show everyone the information through social media. But neither of those things happened like we had planned. Mostly because our lawyer advised that if I showed my parents the information, there was the possibility that my parents tried to cover my brother's back and prevent him from doing the things we had planned for him. I didn't think about that possibility at first, mostly because I wanted to try to knock some common sense out of my parents' minds. But at that point I could trust them because there was the possibility they had covered up my brother's actions before, and that spreading the information through social media was something that my brother could use in his favor by claiming defamation which would basically complicate things needlessly. So the confrontation with my parents would have to wait, also mentioning that during that time I went completely NC with them because I didn't want them to screw things over and because I couldn't trust them anymore. Here I have to mention my sister. She took one for the team and all this time she pretended to be in a neutral position, while in reality she was helping me and my fiancé. During that time, my sister learned more about the time my brother was gone. The main things she learned were these. After the incident at the party, my brother basically moved to the other side of the country, because he had a friend over there. My family had common sense at the time, and turned their backs on him. When he started to live there, he basically told everyone the history that his family had disowned him, because they found out he was having an affair with his brother's girlfriend. Yes, the F had the audacity to tell that story talking about my fiancé. Since I mentioned before, there was no police file because the night of the incident, I basically sent him to the hospital, and because of that, we couldn't proceed with legal action without my brother dragging me with him. That's why my brother was able to get a job and rebuild his life. My brother first contacted my parents at the end of 2021, the worst part of the pandemic in my country. And since then he and my mother have maintained regular contact. She and my father even visited him a few times. And finally, maybe the worst, as it turned out during those years, my brother has a daughter. Basically, his daughter was the result of a one-night stand. He basically got a girl pregnant in April of 2021. They agreed to co-parent because neither of them wanted to get married. And finally, in December of that same year, they had my niece. 
My brother introduced them to my parents and sister two weeks before all the evidence was ready. And when she gave me the notice, it was like a bowl of cold water splashing against my face. At first, I couldn't believe what my sister told me. But she showed me pictures of them. For that instant, my world trembled again because now not only my family has to face the truth, but also his family. But then I realized that child was another reason to continue to seek justice because we couldn't risk her or her mom being in contact with my brother. Once again, my fiancé and I were there for each other. If this whole situation has been difficult for me, I can't imagine what is in store here. I dude. I am able to fully understand how it is to overcome a traumatic experience like what she lived and be able and capable to revive it in order to help others. The minimum I can do for her is to be with her in every step of this whole process. Finally, after all of these, the day arrived. My brother was in my parents' house when the police showed up, and according to my sister, it wasn't pretty. It only took the police knocking on the door for my brother to start running, and the police finally caught him. He tried to fight back, but it ended with him being tased and adding the charge of aggression against a police officer. After two days in lockdown, my brother was sent to prison during the process of the trial. The trail was a whole process, in and outside the court. During the trial two of the women who were assaulted by my brother broke down in tears. While they were testifying, my fiancé was able to maintain a straight face during her testimony. But after we were alone she starts sobbing and O oh starts sobbing with her. But I was able to calm her, that moment and when my parents and my sister showed up to testify were the moments I broke down. That man finally was facing justice. But he had already had done so much damage. I feel like many of the girls won't be able to fully forget, but rather learn to live with the trauma. It was the hardest week of my life. But finally, after some many time my brother was found guilty of eight charges. He is going to be the rest of his life in prison. Of course he tried to at least drag me with him, because of the excessive use of self-defense force words of his lawyer. But the judge dismissed the accusation. As for my niece, the mother was originally in denial. But after showing her the evidence, she was more than willing to help us with all of these. As for my parents, and those who supported my brother, it is going to be hard to never see them again. Mostly my parents but I can't trust them anymore. And while I am now losing a part of my family, my future seems bright beside the women I love. Now I feel like a weight has been lifted, not only for me and my fiancé, but for all the other women who were harmed by my brother. I can only express my gratitude and my admiration for all those women, as well as for every person who shared a similar story in the comments of my previous posts. To all those women and men who have ever been victims of something as horrible as this, I give you my best wishes so that you can live a peaceful life and for all those who are afraid to speak, I can tell you that you are not alone. This situation showed me that there are more good people than bad, and that there will always be someone willing to extend their hand to help. I hope that my fiancé's story can reach the right ears and help those who need it. I feel that a stage of our lives has ended. But at the end, I feel like it is a new beginning for everyone who deserves it. Now that the excuse of a human being brother is finally sent to jail, this story is flared as concluded. Honestly. What were the family thinking when trying to forgive someone for doing an act that could give somebody PTSD? I hope OP cuts his losses and has a beautiful journey with his fiance. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.